Hey, it's been a tight market. I hear potential home buyers feeling a little defeated right now with the tight inventory in the housing market. We had one client that didn't succeed until the eighth home that they put an offer on. So what's a strategy to get a successful offer accepted in a super tight market? I decided to check it out. So I did some research with successful buyers agents and this is their advice. All right, ready? Here it comes. First, buyers should write out a list of needs or must haves and wants to streamline their house hunting efforts. If four bedrooms is the minimum needed, why look at three bedrooms? It's a waste of time that you just don't have. Everyone should expect that sellers will receive multiple offers, some below list, some at list, and probably a bunch over. This means that if a buyer finds a house that they like, they make the best offer right away. It's not a time to play games. They want to get in and strike hard. Offering below can be a disadvantage unless it's overpriced to begin with, that's another caution in this market. Sellers may be trying to get more than the home is worth and it may not appraise for that value, of course. If possible, home buyers can negotiate a two month rent back, give the sellers time to purchase another home and get out of that one into their new home. Don't just write a heartfelt letter to the sellers. The buyers must do more, like record a family video. I've seen DocuSign where the whole family DocuSigns and takes a picture. Make sure your lender has the buyer fully underwritten so a quicker closing is possible and more certain for the listing agent so that they don't feel as much risk. Well, these are the top six recommendations that will help buyers succeed in a tight seller's market. If you have other strategies to share, please email or call. We'd love to hear them, love to share them. And now for minding your own business. In light of the recent investigations over realtor and lender co-marketing, I wanted to look at what that really means. The bottom line is that the rest of the rules state that anything an agent would otherwise have to pay for, such as flyers, postcards, Zillow, and it's co-branded, there must be a paper trail showing a 50-50 split in cost and this is really heating up so it's important realtors and loan officers are generally paid commission so their hours cannot be monetized if either has an hourly paid employee that's involved in the development or implementation of the co-marketing campaign those costs must be accounted for in the split co-marketing is a great thing to do just do it in a reasonable fashion that's going to keep you protected both your partners and yourself it's not personal and you're not doing yourself a favor if you have your hand out wanting freebies from loan officers or any of your vendors it's actually going to cost you if you get a respa violation and you're fined and it could cost you big well that's this edition of the real estate insider weekly thank you for joining me again have a great day